When I was 11, I picked stocks. I had the whole wrong idea. I was interested in watching stocks, and I thought stocks were things that went up and down, and I charted them. I read books on technical analysis. I read Edwards and McGee, I think that was the classic then, hundreds and hundreds of pages. And I read that whole thing over and over again. I read everything. And I thought, the first eight years, I thought the important thing was to predict what a stock would do and predict the stock market. And then I read Ben Graham, you know, when I was 19 or 20. And I realized that I was doing it exactly the wrong way, but it didn't hurt that I had that background and everything. And I rejiggered my mind and when I read the book, The Intelligent Investor, and from that point, I never bought another stock. I bought businesses that happened to be publicly traded, but I became an owner of a business and I did not care whether a stock went up or down the next day or the next week or the next month or the next year. And I didn't have any idea what it would do. I didn't know what the stock market would do, but I knew businesses. I'm a bright guy who's terribly interested in what he does. I've spent a lifetime doing it. And I've surrounded myself with people that bring out the best in me. And you don't need to be a genius in what I do. That's the good thing about it. If I went into physics, a whole lot of other subjects, I'd be an also brand. But I am in a game that you probably need 120 points of IQ, you know. But 170 doesn't do any better than 120. It may do worse, probably do worse, but you don't really need brains. What you, do you need? You need the right orientation. You know, 90% of the people, I'm putting the figure out of the air, but 90% of the people that buy stocks don't think of them the right way. They think about something that they hope goes up next week. <laughs> and they think about the market as something they hope goes up. And if it's down, they feel worse. I feel better. And you think about? I think about what the company's going to be worth 10 or 20 years from now. And I hope it goes down when I buy it because I'll buy more. I try to keep my competitive spirit in a game where I can win. I do know this. When I want to do something, I always want to do it big. I put my whole net worth in City Service Preferred, $114.75. Right. <laughs> I've never, since that day, in you know, March 11th, uh, 1942, I have never had less than 80% of my money in American business. You can call them stocks. Or but equities. I, but I see them as American business. I've owned a piece of American business, at least 80% at all times. I just, I don't want to own anything else. I want to own a home and, you know, things my family wants and all that. But owning five homes doesn't mean anything to me because I'm, I'm going to be happy in one home and, and there's a certain amount of things that go wrong with everything. And <laughs> if I got two homes, I know I've got more problems and I don't have more happiness. <laughs> what brings you the happiness? What makes me happiest is what I'm doing, what I'm doing. Yeah, I enjoy but... two things about it. One, I know I'll win over time. That doesn't mean I'll beat everybody else or anything like that. But I'll, I mean, the game is very, very, very easy if you have the right lessons in your mind about what you're buying. I'm not buying stocks. I'm buying pieces of overwhelmingly American business. And I'm happy when I'm doing it. I'm happier when stocks are going down because I, I can buy more of them for the same amount of money. I'd be happy if I was a farmer. I'd want farmland to go down so I could buy more acreage. It just makes sense. I'll tell you the second thing I really like. I like being trusted by people. I would rather do what I do with partners than do it sitting in a room myself, even though I might make more money that way. Let's pretend there is no stock market. Let's say I had to buy these privately, like you buy a farm privately, like you buy an apartment house privately. They're investments. So you're looking to say, what can I do with money I've saved to put it away so I feel good about getting it back later under any circumstances, but not necessarily on a given moment. But if I have a farm, it's gonna take me a while. But people would be so much better if they if they actually didn't have a stock market in terms of buying business. The United States economy, and it's very easy to look at the statistics on it, I mean, more people, a greater percentage of the American population is uh, wealthy now, or having more income now, than they've ever had. And if you look at whether Bank of America can give you their average deposit, I mean, you just look at the wealth. That doesn't mean everybody's wealthy, but it does mean relative to any other period of time, 
I mean, people have more money now. They get mortgages at lower rates than they've ever gotten. So if they want to buy a house or something, right today, you live in an environment where the bottom 2% in terms of income in the United States, the bottom 5%, and for sure the top 1%, all live better.